Good morning. While everybody's quieting down and taking their seats, we want to um, announce what's going to happen right away here real soon. We're going to, in just a moment, we will stand for the invocation by Pastor Michael Coleman of Antioch Baptist Church followed by the Pledge of Allegiance led by Army, Army Specialist Paul Ferris. Paul is currently the Secretary of the Student Veterans Association at Hawkeye Community College and adjutant for the Black Hawk County Collegiate Post of the American Legion 738. He is currently studying network administration and cybersecurity at Hawkeye Community College. And after that, there will be the National Anthem performed by Columbus High School Cade McRae, Tom Evans, Olivia Ryder, and Peyton Fix. Pastor Coleman. <coughs> Shall we stand? Let us pray. Sweet hour prayer, sweet hour prayer that calls me from world of care. And bid me at my father's stone, makes all my wants and wishes known. In seasons of distress and grief, my soul is often found relief. And off escape the tempt of snare by thy return. Sweet hour of prayer. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, may I thy petition bear. To him whose truth and faithfulness engage the waiting soul to bless. And since he bids me seek his face, believe his words and trust his grace. I'll cast on him my every care and wait for thee. Sweet hour of prayer. Lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring. Ring with the harmonies of liberty. With these words over the years we have comforted ourselves as a people. With these words we have asked you to come into our living rooms and our churches and into our meeting rooms and our city um, gatherings, Lord God. We have asked you to be present so that peace may reign, that uh, equal opportunity may raise up, that civil rights might be full, that business might be to its greatest potential. And so we come again to ask you by these same words that words of faith, these are words that give us hope and words that give us delight, that you might be in the presence that calm our, uh, our, our fears, Lord God, and make us to know that we're but one people. And that being that one people, we should work to the good of all. We come thanking you for this leader that you put before us in this time, even as past leaders, and now see what things we have done, Lord God, and how far we have come. Be with us in this day and the days to come. Do it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air. Gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the
time it is. Boom Shakalaka! Our show is called North End Update Live. Boom Shakalaka mm. it is, Shabiba. Yes, okay. We do it every Friday. We're going to turn the camera around now, Shabiba. How do we do that? Okay, um... Mm. Our Facebook Thank made you. it a lot easier to go live. It's the honor flight. And they're welcoming, welcoming home veterans. I'm in Denver in L.A. and I'm watching the show. When I thought of the idea, it was kind of to show people that there are a lot of good things that should be talked about on the north end of Waterloo. Because there's always something good happening on the north end and everywhere else in the Cedar Valley. Hi. <laughs> I'm Rocky. And I'm Shaviva. And we together are Rocky and Shaviva for uh, Rocky and Shaviva Live from Waterloo. And we welcome you all here today for this wonderful occasion. Yes. Um, we usually go live, and exactly right now we are live. So we want everybody to say, Boom Shakalaka! Boom Shakalaka! <laughs> <All right. laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Yes. Because there's always something good happening on the North End. And everywhere else in the Cedar Valley. That's yes. what we're saying. Yes. That's right. And um, through the year, we're celebrating our one year anniversary of doing this show, uh, talking about the good things in Waterloo, all yes. over the Cedar Valley. And what's one thing that we've learned, Shaviva? Well, one thing that we've learned is that there is far, far more good happening in our community than bad. And we like to talk about the good things that are happening here. That's yes. right. What else, Rock? What else can we say? Um, well, we are, there are a lot of unsung heroes that just don't get the notif you know, don't get the publicity that they need and we like to show them off because all the good stuff they do really makes us all look good. Yes, we definitely like to talk about that and we also like to talk about um, how much good, when you think about our, our guests that we've had, how much good comes from collaboration. Oh yes, a lot of yes. people collaborate around here. Each one of you collaborate to do something in the community to make this, that makes our community better. A better place to live, yes. And for instance, Mayor Hart. Yes, has yes. collaborated a lot to bring business and industry to our community. Yes. Um, also, all the citizens. We is right, have collaborated to put this mayor in office and for a second term. Yes. How about that? How about that? <laughs> okay. At this time, we'd like to introduce Benjamin Frazier. Yes. A fifth grade student at Irvin, Irving Elementary who is going to speak about synergy. Benjamin, there he is. Hello. Hello. How y'all doing today? Great. My name is Benjamin Frazier, and I am a fifth grader from Irving Elementary. My parents are Marshall and Corey Frazier. I am a member of our Student Lighthouse team, a group of students who strive to be leaders and work to make our school and our world a better place. Synergy means working together is better and together means uniting and working as one and as a team. We can achieve more when we work as a team. When we work together, we can go higher than we think we can. When we have unity, cooperation, trust, and love, we won't be just a team, we will become family. Synergy means working together because we know that when we work together, we are able to work better. Thank you for your time. I need you to step back up there. Don't go anywhere yet. All right, so I, I want to know, um, just before we get this started, because we know it's all about uh, the youth in this community as well. So I, I just need to interview you for a quick second. Is that okay? Yeah. Uh, this wasn't <laughs> maybe not part of the program, but uh, very relevant. So, so Ben, tell me, have, have you ever wanted to invent something or create something yourself? I would create like a procedure that would end cancer because I hate cancer. Oh my God! Did you hear that? A procedure. 
And, you know, I want to let you know and every young person that's watching this that anything that you want to do is absolutely possible. When you synergize, when you follow the seven habits, when you do all those things of being a leader in you, a leader in me, all those things are possible. So I believe that you're going to do it if somebody doesn't do it before you, right? All right, thank you. Wow, I, I was thinking he was going to say, you know, I'm going to create a, a video game <laughs> where we can also do our homework and get it done at the same time. <laughs> but, um, you know, just following on to, to uh, Ben and, you know, uh, my, uh, my children here and the young people, um, when we talk about things being uh, the opportunity for things to actually happen, um, we don't really have to go much further then taking a look at what happened about 100 years ago uh, when John Deere purchased the Waterloo Gasoline Company. And you know, who would have thought that at this point in day that John Deere's would have revolutionized the agricult agricultural machinery, not just in the city of Waterloo, not just in the Cedar Valley, but become a worldwide leader. And when you take a look at the fact that the different companies, the product engineering center that's located within the Cedar Valley is one of the best technological offices or agribusiness places in the entire world that's located right here within the Cedar Valley. But also the tribute that we have today because we said strong ties. And isn't it amazing that the bow tie, <laughs> the fastened clip on, bow tie was actually patented in 1918, right where Jameson's is at right now. But the actual patent was there. The innovation, the creativity, the forward thinking are symbolic of the city of Waterloo. And that's why we want to celebrate all of those things today. We want, to, we want to manifest those things. When we talk about our legacy and our history as a community, we are strong because we have an innovative spirit that is second to none. And we can absolutely change the world. And that's been exhibited by just a couple of the examples that I've given a second ago. But it starts with our young people as well and their creativity also. And right now, I would like to call up uh, University of Northern Iowa uh, senior Jordan Caruso. And Jordan is the official STEM ambassador who has partnered on projects uh, from our first robotics leagues and the recent Midwest Regional Robotics Competition at the McLeod Center, Wise Girls, the Boys and Girls Club, and the Waterloo Public Library fashion event. So absolutely talented. So Jordan, you have a presentation for us today, correct? <laughs> I don't know if I necessarily have a presentation, but we actually made bow ties um, since the patent was made for the bow tie clip in Waterloo. So at, at UNI, we actually have a fabric printer, so we can make our own fabric print um, on Illustrator, put that in repeat, and print it on our own fabric in our lab. Um, and from that, we can cut out and make our own designs. So Mayor Hart actually asked us to make some bow ties, and I made a design on that with the Waterloo logo. And we made all of these for him to have and <laughs> uh, hand out. I think that's what you're doing with them. All right. Thank you yeah. so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And we appreciate so much your efforts. Did you want to? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. I would really like to emphasize. And who are, who are you? Oh, I'm Annette Lynch. I am Jordan's professor over at the university. And I'd like to recognize um, uh, Jordan's contribution to the community in terms of all the children that she has worked with in our computer-aided design lab. She has taught endless numbers, probably some of the kids in this room, including actually Mayor Hart's son, how to do computer-aided design, how to design their own logos for the stage, for the hip-hop group. So she has contributed a bunch to this community and I'm very proud of her. Thank you for giving right. her this opportunity. And thank you. <laughs> and thank you for allowing them to have an education where they can work directly within the community. 
So thank you. Um, I also want to make some quick acknowledgments because uh, it'll be a, a, a tough time at home if I forget this evening, but uh, <laughs> my lovely wife, Cassandra Hart, is in the audience today. <laughs> Vice Principal at Cunningham School of Excellence, and they're always looking for partners as well. Uh, my children as well, Quentin Jr. sitting there looking so excited with his bow tie. <laughs> my son, Quindin, uh, Quindin Emmanuel's here, and my little princess, Halea, is sitting here as well. So uh, we want to thank them for being here. Um, and I, I have to tell you, I know all of you probably feel the same way, but I believe it more so than any of you. I have the greatest pastor, uh, Pastor Michael E. Coleman of Antioch Baptist Church, who is here with us. Did a wonderful invocation. And we could not ask for any better MCs than Rocky and Shaviva to be able to do this today. So thank you so much. And Army Specialist Paul Ferris from Hawkeye Community College, very near and dear to my heart. I spent a lot of time in the halls of uh, Hawkeye College as working there. Um, from Cedar Valley Catholic Schools, I think Carol Luce and Dr. Uh, Monroe is here, and uh, my superintendent, uh, Dr. Jane Lindemann, is in the office today. And, and I, this is kind of, this is something that I want to do as well. Could we have all the city staff people please stand up? Please stand up with your nice bow tie, city staff. All right. And while they're standing, I, I want to tell everyone in this audience that the city staff that we have for Waterloo are second to none. Every day they are working hard, Monday through Monday or Monday through Sunday, they are out here working hard to make sure that your streets are, streets are safe. They are working hard to make sure that your accounting is taken care of, but from place to place, our city staff is working hard for you every day. So I want to acknowledge all of them. So thank you for being here. Not that they had a choice, but. <laughs> <laughs> all right, can we have uh, all of our elected officials please stand up? If you would please stand to be acknowledged. We have Council, Councilwoman Margaret Klein, Council, Councilman Chris Shimp, Councilman Jerome Amos, and Councilman Pat Morrissey as well. We want to acknowledge you and thank you for your efforts also. And when I get ready to make this presentation, if I start throwing out stuff that's way far out there, you can't talk about it because there's four of you sitting over there right now, and that's a quorum. <laughs> Uh, our boards and commissioners, are you in the audience? If you're on a board or commission, could you please stand up for us as well? If you would please stand. Thank you so much. And our boards and commissioners will probably tell you uh, it's great pay being on a board and commission for the city. <laughs> But we thank you so much for all of your efforts because your decisions help the council to be able to make the decisions on behalf of this community. And I see former councilman Tom Powers in our audience as well. So we thank you. Thank you so much for all that you do for the city. And we also thank all those that work in our volunteer for our nonprofits and our social service organizations. And once you start naming people and norm naming groups, you always miss a bunch of people as well. So I apologize in advance for uh, not mentioning you if I miss you. But more important, importantly, um, I want to thank those of you who choose to live here, work here, play here and to live your lives here. And those of you who care enough about the progress of the city to take a little time out of your busy schedules to come to an event like this. And in this day and time, I don't take it for granted that you're here because we have seen across the state and on a national level, sometimes a complete polarization on issues that are important to all of us. And sometimes it seems that we hear more about what separates us than what actually brings us together. But we must ne never forget 
about those that have paved the way and made it possible for us to be here today. People like Willa Mae Wright and Curly Haltman, Anna Mae Weems, Bob Brown, and so many others throughout our community here and gone that have paved the way for us to have the opportunities we all have today. And nor can we forget about the Benjamins and the Haleas and uh, Quentin Juniors or children that depend on all of us in any capacity to make sure that we put them first. Because it takes all of us working together to create stronger ties for a stronger community. And I was asked a little while ago, um, Quentin, what have you ever done on your own? <laughs> and you know, you, you start thinking about it. Well, you know, I, I had this idea and this concept, like we started from the heart. And then I started thinking about all those that helped along the way. And then I started thinking, well, I did get elected, right? <laughs> and then I remember that I only had one vote in that process. Then I remember, man, I'm raising some amazing children. <laughs> My wife just rolled her eyes. And then I thought about the foundation that was laid before me from my parents, Lily and Grossy Hart, that are in the audience today, and also my mother-in-law, Viola Cody, as well. Well, of course you know that the state of the city, I, I've done all the graphics and done everything myself, but I have to remember <laughs> our communications director, uh, Wendy Bowman, for all her efforts with uh, city staff and people in the community to actually make this day a reality. So we want to thank Wendy as well. So, <clears throat> so, uh, I can tell the truth in front of all of you that I have done nothing on my own. Uh, but none of us have. While one of us may have come up with the great idea, there's been others that have come along to refine it. There's been others that provided the tools and the finances to make it a reality. There's others that actually made connections for us or opened doors or help us to take it to the next level. And see, when working together, the results are far greater than working alone. But we have to look no further than the very building that we sit in right now, the Courtyard Marriott, with its owner, Rodney Blackwell, of Financial District Properties. So I want you to go on a little trip with me right now and close your eyes and just imagine in this very building the sound of heavy machinery the clanging of metal, the smell of oil, and the exhaust, with a huge campus of buildings and smokestacks busy with activities, or maybe the years of these buildings that has set empty may come to mind. But when we open our eyes and admire the beauty, the elegance, and the transformation from rubble to refinement, we may too easily forget all that it took to get us to this particular place. It took years of collaboration, partnerships, to transform this building into the state-of-the-art certified LEED building with life and vibrancy that is talked about around the country. And when some people said no, there was the vision to say yes. And this is a true example of bringing people together with a common vision focused on the greater good for this community. Working with the Courtyard Marriott, the Tech Works Campus, the Greater Cedar Valley Alliance, former Mayor Buck Clark, the City Council, the staff, and all the partners that collaborated to make this and centerpiece around the Midwest and country. And see that spirit of teamwork, collaboration, partnership, or as Benjamin reminded us, the habit of synergy is what we've come to celebrate today. In order to work together, we must first get to know each other. We must build relationships with our neighbors, our coworkers, with our business community, with our educators, and with our city departments. 
It is only when we have strong ties to each other that we can strengthen our communities in ways that are not easily shaken, not easily divided, nor easily defeated. And last evening, we launched a, our first residence academy. And it's where 30 community members gathered from all different perspectives and ideologies to come in for the start of an eight week course on how the city works. In the crowd, there were people that just moved here from other communities, but they wanted to learn more. And then we had some longtime residents that wanted to understand the roles of an elected official and the staff. And the Residence Academy is one way that we are building relationships to strengthen our ties. And also last month, the University of Northern Iowa's Business and Community Services and Renew Waterloo um, spoke to about 170 small businesses reaching out to find out what were their needs and their concerns to help connect them to the resources that they need to be successful and to grow. And we sent out survey, inf survey information and we made those businesses because we know that our small businesses are the backbones of our communities. And we must keep that line of communication at all times to strengthen our ties. And throughout this community, we are seeing examples of stronger ties. Waterloo is the most diverse city in the state per capita and home to Cinco de Mayo events, Northeast Arch Festivals, uh, the fourth largest Irish Fest celebration across the country, ML MLK Day commemorations, Krasisic Teferic celebrations, and people from the island of Burma celebrating. And these are just to name a few, many of the other examples of inclusion. And our Waterloo Community School System under the leadership of Dr. Jane Lindemann has more than 55 languages that are being spoken in our school system with one of the state's first dual French and English classes. In addition, first in the state to have an exceptional children's program where a child with a disability is able to showcase their intellectual giftedness as well. With regards of your city staff, our public safety, Waterloo's crime rate continues to trend downward. The more serious group A offenses declined 8.1% from what was reported in 2016. And this puts us at a point where our crime rate is the lowest that has been in decades. The Waterloo Police Department is are implementing effective community policing strategies where we are reaching out and utilizing out-of-the-box programs to reach the entire population. Officer Brandt, under the leadership of Chief Dan Trelka, has created the program called the Hail Mary Project. And this program utilizes athletics to empower our young people to reach their full potential while creating a fun environment for growth. Our fire department with this medics and trained professionals are still able to have a response time to your needs of less than four minutes and, thir four, four minutes and 30 seconds. And we know that when it comes to saving lives that every second counts. Our iconic 4th Street Bridge has received a necessary makeover. Let me say that again. Our iconic 4th Street Bridge has received a necessary makeover this past summer. Did it ever need it? Even my mom was like, when are y'all gonna do something with that bridge? <laughs> but this project was a collaboration of our engineering department, our finance department, our Blackhawk County Gaming, Main Street, the Waterloo Center for Arts and Consultants, and a special art portion by the youth art team, thanks to work with Danny Laudick and their director, was able to create artwork along our bridge. And you can see some of the, is that me? <laughs> and you can see some of the artwork that's around the building as well and on our bridge. <laughs> and it is fitting that we not only maintain, but we enhance the appearance of one of our most iconic uh, features. Because if you take a look at the pedestrian bridge, 
It's on the six o'clock news. It's in publications. It's in artwork portraying the city. And it also serves as a symbol of connectedness, of unity, providing access to one part of downtown to the other part, bringing people together. The city of Waterloo has began the process of creating one of the most technologically advanced in the state traffic adaptive systems with the fiber project connected. Our library and our Center for Arts have seen over a half a million visitors this year. We've done close to four miles of road construction. Our leisure services and sportsplex and Young Arena are hosts to several semi-pro semi sports team with the Waterloo Blackhawks, the Waterloo Bucks, the Cedar Valley Court Kings, and we've added deck hockey. And our CES department has created a brand new state-of-the-art public access studio. Our Human Rights Commission is celebrating a series of events that are in commemoration of the 50th year of the slaying of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. But not in addition to show division, but to show how we can be united as a community. Our clerk's office, our HR office, and our finance office, along with our city council, have created task force that are dealing with real issues to make sure that our city government moves into the year of 2018. Grand Crossing, Grand Crossing 1 and 2, will forever change the skyline of downtown Waterloo. And this project was led by Brent Dahlstrom, real estate company, and his colleagues, along with our community development office and multiple sources to create a first class affordable mixed in income condominium development for downtown. And I highlight this for you because this project has been nationally recognized across the entire country from Washington DC to the state of Iowa because this is a development that not only have, it has mixed, mixed income people living in this development because we want to make sure that everyone is included to the renaissance of the city of Waterloo. Our CDBG helps work to provide safe, affordable, uh, com comfortable housing by bringing stability to our children and security to our seniors. And the city of Waterloo was awarded a $3 million federal grant to deal with lead abatement within our community. And the historic Walnut neighborhood is seeing a transformation like no other community, like no other neighborhood in our city has seen. We have partnered or brought together partners along with the neighborhood, um, the, the Walnut Neighborhood Group, the Boys and Girls Club, JSA, um, who I knew I was going to get up here and forget a couple people. Um, but working together in a collaborative, collaborative effort to transform that neighborhood. So what we see taking place right now, we're taking a look at the historical aspect of that community, of the neighborhood. And if you're not familiar with the redevelopment uh, of JSA, I think Mr. David Deeds is in the audience today there. They're taking houses that have a historical significance and they're fixing up and, and refurbishing those homes so that people can go back and live directly in the community. The Heartland Vineyard Church has taken a great leadership role in galvanizing and working with the neighborhood organization to create synergy, as Benjamin called it a little bit earlier. And I would ask Mr. Rodney Anderson to stand up. If you want to wave your hand like this, Rodney, like you're in church. <laughs> um, Rodney Anderson has been doing extraordinary work with the neighborhood as well. We just broke ground this past Monday on the all-in grocery store, which is close to a $9 million development taking place right on Franklin Street in that corridor. And we're partnering with Habitat for Humanity to create living opportunities within that area as well. And this is important because no matter how far we have great developments to the south or to the north, we want to make sure that every community has an opportunity to succeed so no one gets left behind as we all move forward collectively. And this will be a model that we can use in other parts of our community for future success as well. 
We've also seen major renovations at the KWWL building, Community National Bank and Trust, TechWorks, uh, Tyson and Crystal Ice and Advanced Heat Treat expansions on the horizon. And we've seen the phenomenal work that our own Waterloo Development Corp has done in downtown Waterloo to create that framework for success moving us forward. And I think Dan and Bob may be in here. Could you please stand up, gentlemen? All right, we thank them as well. And we also have to acknowledge Tavis Hall, who is our uh, newest director of our Convention and Visitors Bureau, and I believe Jessica Rucker is here. She is our Main Street Executive Director as well, newly hired, so could you both stand up? And so this is absolutely important because it's vital, the hands of those that are in leadership to move our community forward. And so as we continue to move forward and look to tomorrow what's going to take place in the city of Waterloo, we have the almost the completion of the Hawkeye Community College Adult Learning Center taking place in downtown. And Dr. Bradley as well is in the audience with us today. Uh, where's Chuck Rowe at? Chuck. Also, we have the new Boys, Boys and Girls Club uh, Teen Center that is about to break ground at some point once we move forward. But Chuck, you're doing an excellent job working with our young people as well, so thank you as well. Our Friends of Faith, I believe Lisa Gates and Velda Phillips are in the audience somewhere, but Friends of Faith uh, is the Friendship Village Project. It'll be a $70 million redevelopment and development of our Friendship Village as well. So making sure that they're taking care of those that are most vulnerable, our senior population. We are going to begin the construction of a reinvigorated convention center this year. We have other exciting projects like the Art Mall Project. Is Mr. Dahlstrom in the audience today? I think he was going to be here. Could you please stand up as well? Uh, Brent Daw you have on a bow tie. <laughs> but the Grand Crossing 1 and 2 and the Art Mall project um, and a, a project, we're going to have another premier building project at our old flea market site and we're hoping that uh, Mr. Mr. Uh, Dahlstrom is going to take the lead and continue to build those up like he's done with other projects in the city. The City of Waterloo is working on plans for the creation of a new development of a marina along the river. University Avenue and Highway 63 overpass continues to move forward. The Lincoln Park transformation is a project that we're excited about moving forward as well. And we also have in our audience today Mr. Buzz Anderson. Um, if you don't know, if you don't know um, Mr. Anderson, Born and raised in the city of Waterloo, family has been here for a long time. And Mr. Anderson had been thinking or thinking about the possibility of working on a residential development on property that's been in his family for over 91 years. So Mr. Anderson stepped up to the call and created the concept of Paradise Estates. And Paradise Estates will be near the orange, orange area and Paradise Estates will be the largest residential development to take place in the city of Waterloo, probably in the past 30 to 40 years as well. So we want to recognize you for your vision and for your leadership in that process. And we still need to vote on that next week. <laughs> but we'll get there together. Another project that we're working on that we're really proud about, and overall it seems like the entire Cedar Valley is proud of, and that is the concept of shared services. We have a shared services committee that's composed of uh, Linda, Dr. Linda Allen at Hawkeye Community College, uh, Dr. Norris at the University of Northern Iowa, uh, my good friend Mayor Jim Brown from Cedar Falls, uh, my, uh, the City of Waterloo, we also have uh, the Waterloo Community School District, Cedar Falls Community School District, our uh, Blackhawk County um, as well, and Intercog. 
uh, is putting these shared services conversations together because we recognize that there were some commonalities where, well, just let me put it, it's been too long since we sat down at the table and saw what we can do to do things a little bit le better as an entire community. And so we are now into, we, we've started with our human resources area and we transcended and moved towards the wastewater treatment facilities for all of our partner cities. And I forgot to mention Evansdale uh, as well in that conversation. So we're working together to see how we can work together smarter for our long range future. And I also failed to mention uh, Mr. D uh, Councilman Frank Dara is in the audience. Uh, today as well from Cedar Falls. Thank you for being here. And if you didn't know, uh, Frank's wife, Carrie Dara, is the, um, uh, the, the interim director for the Cedar Valley um, Chamber. So we want to thank her for her efforts as well as moving us forward till we get to that next point. But I say all of these things to say that Henry Ford said it best. Coming together is a beginning Keeping together is progress, and working together is success. And the future looks bright for the city of Waterloo, but the spirit of cooperation must resonate to every fabric of this community. There is no challenge that we can't overcome when we work together, nor any peak that we can't climb to when we reach to have strong ties. But just like 100 years ago, the, innova the innovation for the patent of the fastened bow tie or the purchase of the Waterloo Gasoline Company by John Deere or the incorporation of the city of Waterloo to become a first class, uh, become a class city happened 150 years ago, almost a month from now. So we can achieve anything together if we put our minds together. And I want to thank all of you in the audience today, all of you that are listening to this, and I want you to know that Waterloo is a strong community, and we have so much to be proud of. We have a rich heritage. We have strong people. We have a business community that's thriving and investing within our community. So my challenge over the course of this next year is to ask yourself, what can I do to synergize a little bit better? What can I do to challenge that person next to me, but not just talk about some of the challenges or the issues that we face, but how can we work together to build consensus so that our children that look up to us for leadership and opportunity will have a place that they're proud of, and those that have come before us feel proud of the advancements and their contributions that they made along the way. So I wanna say God bless all of you. God bless the city of Waterloo. God bless the Cedar Valley, and thank you. Wendy, were you going to do this part? <laughs> so given that there's so many things that have taken place over this past year, and to talk about, if you want benchmarks to talk about it, we showed those benchmarks, we talked about those projects, but the city of Waterloo is not just being recognized in and of itself. Today, Jane Armstrong, who is the director, uh, district director, for <laughs> no, we give we give honor to to where honor is due. Uh, district director for the Iowa, um, U.S. United States America Small Business Association um, is here today with a special presentation for the city of Waterloo. All right, thank you. Can I? I probably you need to. You can the... stand on it. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Actually, thank you, um, Mayor Hart. Um, we really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. 
We have started a tradition of um, during National Small Business Week that we present um, a special award that we created and we're the only state, the only SBA office in the country and we're the administration, not an association. So we're not a chamber of commerce. Um, so the, and we're, we're going through a rebranding process so you're gonna hear about that. But um, anyhow, the, um, we, we normally present this award during National Small Business Week, which is in May, and then we represent it at a local event in the community. But we decided to flip flop this year because we um, this event when I called the mayor and told him about what uh, what we wanted to do to recognize Waterloo. This just was the ideal um, environment for us to present the award and to um, celebrate it with the community. So um, we are very honored at the Small Business Administration to, um, to recognize Waterloo as the SBA Iowa Small Business Community of the Year uh, this year. So. I want to tell you a little bit about how we got here with this too and um, a lot of people um, I, I always like to put in a little bit of plug of about the SBA because a lot of people don't realize especially with some of the federal agencies I don't think it's as much recognition and as our SBA administrator who uh, Linda McMahon who's part of the president's cabinet she always likes to say that the SBA is the federal government's best kept secret and um, there's so many different things that we have been involved in over time and, and um, the partnership is so important. So um, a lot of people don't realize some of the companies, we always think about um, uh, these large corporations that we take for granted that are large or that are corporations, but everybody got their start as a small business. It is so important to the economic vitality of the community. Um, but we've helped, um, SBA programs have helped companies like Apple, Intel, Federal Express, Nike, Ben and Jerry's, um, Annie Ann's, you name it. Um, uh, Under Armour, uh, so many uh, large corporations got their start with our programs, often in a garage and around a kitchen table, like many businesses started. And it's all about the collaboration. So what this, uh, this award really recognizes, there's a couple criteria that we look at. And this is a subjective award, it's something our office, we decide as a group um, what community do we really see that's really getting it and and is really has the environment for small businesses to um, not only start up but to thrive. So um, we look at the collaborative economic development um, efforts that it's that it's not just local efforts but um, local entities working with state agencies, federal agencies, private sector non and the nonprofits as well. Um, leveraging all of these economic development resources um, so we're not leaving opportunities on the table and also just really demonstrating um, really the community support for small business startups and expansions. Um, Waterloo certainly has demonstrated an ideal environment for small businesses um, and we're very honored um, to recognize you for this. But I, I have to just personally say too, having been, and being a new Iowan, I moved here three years ago to Des Moines, but um, it's not easy to adjust moving um, to Iowa from another region of the country, if I can be quite honest. But there's one community, there's, there's one community I've always felt very welcome in is Waterloo and every time I come here. And so I just want to say that personally um, because I get it. So we have, um, it, it's all about all the different groups that we all work together and everything. Um, the, uh, what the, um, I, I want to identify some of the, the different um, collaborations that are going on. Of course, with the SBA, you get the package deal. We have 15 small business development centers. Amy Dutton is here from the SBDC, um, which is at the Uni University of Northern Iowa, of course. And also Richard Weiss is here from our SCORE chapter, and we're looking to get a SCORE chapter started in Waterloo, too. I know there's been some different interests. And um, also, too, um, 
you know, when you look around at some of the community economic development projects and you look at the TechWorks campus and everything that this represents and all the energy that is here, um, the collaboration with the, the Greater Cedar Valley Alliance and Chamber, um, we, we have worked closely with in the, in the past couple of years. Main Street is so important, and I think the support that the city provides to all these organizations, all the programs at UNI, including the Small Business Development Center um, and the partnership that we have there, um, but Hawkeye Community College as well. Um, and I have to, to uh, do a shout out to, um, to Danita Gatson, um, who has been um, kind of my bellwether too um, for really giving me, um, really connecting me into the community and giving me a lot of insight. She has been wonderful. Um, my first visit to Waterloo, one of the first visits was to VGM, and I don't know if you realize what you have here in the community and the thousands of small businesses that are connected into VGM, not only across Iowa, but all across the country. And um, I know Tom is here from VGM, but um, the, the collaboration that they have and that Heartland Conference that they do every summer, there's a lot of really good energy here for small businesses. We've also seen a lot of activity. I mean, we're so much more, our administrator likes to say this, that we are so much more than lending. And people just think SBA and, and government guaranteed loans and everything. But um, we have seen, but it is an important part of what we do at the SBA is, is the lending. And we have seen a lot more activity from our local banks. And I know Blackhawk um, Economic Development um, Corporation and, and um, Steve is here, Steve um, Bruskern from the, um, who's the executive director of Blackhawk and has been an important partner and has been one of our top lenders um, always, um, but especially in the last couple years, that that has really played a factor. But our lending in Waterloo has doubled in the past two years. And also, too, when you look at the Blackhawk County and you look at that, that um, you are actually, out of the 99 counties, the third leading county as far as SBA lending. Um, across the state. So there's a lot of activity. We want to get more banks active in SBA lending as well. Um, so there's a lot of, um, of um, investment going on in the community. But I also just want to personally thank um, the mayor because something being new to the community and really trying to or getting around the state and and understanding the small business community and what do we have, what are we missing, where are the gaps. And I want to give a shout out for him because there is one thing that really stands out to me um, personally and in all my years, and I, this is my fourth state that I've been an SBA director in, and that is that he not only talks the talk, but he walks the walk. And he talks an important, he is the, one of the few leaders that I have seen really talking about the importance of diversity and inclusiveness and why supplier diversity is so important to the small business community. And we need to amplify that message all across the state because that is a huge gap that we have to open up those doors to underserved markets. So I, you know, I'm here, um, Donnell, um, and, and so thank you, Mayor, for getting it. And um, we just really appreciate that. And I want to recognize the other city officials that are here as well and for all of your support. Um, that you do for small business. And I, I was talking um, to Debbie Durham yesterday. Debbie's my counterpart at the state level with the Iowa Economic Development Authority. And I was talking to Debbie yesterday and I told her that we were recognizing Waterloo with this award this year. And she, she said we got it right. So she um, is real excited. And I also talked to Governor Reynolds about it yesterday at the Rural Summit. And um, everybody is real excited that, that we're recognizing you for all of your efforts. And um, Donnell Conley is here with me, um, my partner in crime, our deputy district director. And we're going to co-present the award to the mayor. And by the way, we, all of the awards that we give out at the SBA are actually designed by small business artisans because we like to support the artisan community as, um, as a, a major force in the, in the community. So this is actually a Humboldt artisan, Jim um, uh, Vermeer, who um, designed this. But it symbolizes the 
um, the, the building blocks to a community. And there's, there's a lot of symbolism in the, the design and everything. It's an absolutely beautiful award. But I do want to, while we celebrate and we recognize all these great things that you guys are doing, and congratulations, you really deserve it, I also want to challenge you. I want to challenge you to partner with the SBA, invite us to the table, include us. We want to be a partner. We want to expand opportunities. We need to open the door, especially for underserved markets, for women, minority, and veteran-owned firms. And I know that I'm very excited that you guys are a recent home-based Iowa community. But let's not just put up a sign. Let's do something about it. And let's support the families. And if they have a husband or wife that it wants to start up a business, they qualify for our programs. So, and the other challenge I have is we have a great manufacturing base here. And we have a lot of indirect suppliers or indirect exporters that are in the supply chain that aren't, using, that aren't being exposed to all the programs that are out there. So let's work together to create more opportunities for those businesses to expand and to open up new markets. And we look forward to working with you and um, getting, you know, we're gonna be doing a lot more events coming up. We, all, we have been doing more in the last couple of years, but we're gonna do even more um, in, the, in the next um, six months. We have a lot of plans, so thank you. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you so much. Gorgeous. <laughs> you got some pictures. We'll get some formal pictures. Okay. Congratulations. Uh, before I call back the, uh, the um, MCs, the host with the most, um, I just want to say, um, speaking of small businesses, um, out in the lobby there will be a couple refreshments um, that, will, that were done by one of our newest small businesses, uh, Athena Speller. I think it's Athena's Goddess to CS. So, <laughs> so you'll be able to enjoy, enjoy some of uh, our things as well. Um, I think you. I think we have something else to do right now as well, right? Yes, yes. Thank you, Mayor. Yes. 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 Um, we want to definitely thank you all for this opportunity today, um, being here. And Wendy Bowman asked us. We were like. Huh? Really? <laughs> yes. yes. So thank you so much. Um, I think now we have a ribbon cutting yeah. ceremony. Yes. 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 Um, I was I was a little remiss in our in my duty as well. Um, for those of you don't, that don't know, we if the chamber could begin to come up for the ribbon cutting, is it right here? So for the ribbon cutting, and you may ask, what are we cutting the ribbon for? Um, well, the city of Waterloo in 2018, this year, officially turned 150 years old. Yeah. Yes, well that's something to be proud about. <laughs> and so we have a, a, a dedication or a commemoration or ribbon cutting, the fact that we turned 150 years old. And we also have Councilman Steve Schmidt as well, who I missed a little bit earlier, who I want to recognize as well. So. Right. And the violins, I believe, will be playing. Will the violins be? No? Okay. <laughs> well, Mayor, um, this is such a tremendous event. Um, we are just honored to be here as members of the Purple Co Coat Club here. Um, we are chamber ambassadors. And we feel it is our duty to go out, promote Waterloo and the Cedar Valley. And we are just so thankful to be invited to something like this. What, an, what a tremendous deal to be 150 years old yes. and to be invited to be able to do this ribbon cutting and celebrate with you. We are just very thankful.
you introduce a couple? Uh, if we can ask the city staff to kind of trickle in somewhere. City staff? Trickle in somewhere. Because we want to get to another 150. Not so much. <laughs> Actually, they should be in front. <laughs> what an honor to be by you two. Oh, my. <laughs> what an honor to be in the crush here with all you guys. Wow. <laughs> so we're going to say Waterloo, 150 years strong. Yes. Count of three. Is it a practice? Do you want to practice? Okay. <laughs> Ready, everybody? One, two, three. Waterloo, 150 years strong. There, thank you. Okay. There you go. This one's for real, everyone. All right. One, two, three. Waterloo, 150 years strong. I should have planned that better. So. <laughs> Thank you all. Shadiva. Thank I want you to all. thank everyone for coming out today for this big celebration and the commemoration of the incorporation of Waterloo and all the other great things that we have happening right here and for the mayor's address to the city. Right, and the bow ties. Yes. <laughs> all right, thank you so much, everyone and enjoy the rest of your day.